So it is nine o'clock. We will get started. Anyway, thank everybody for coming in. And uh, we're going to see what your picture looks like by the end of this meeting. Maybe it'll be a little different. We can put that out to vote for everybody. <laughs> Uh, we've got a fairly small group here. I've only got about, what do I have, 13 or 15 people in here right now. So I'm going to leave it unmuted. So ask questions as we go along. Um, I want everybody to get the most out of this today in our half hour we have together. If, um, you know, if you need to uh, take a phone call or something in the meantime, mute yourself, please. And uh, that will help out. Uh, again, thank you for showing up today. This has been great. This is the third week. I'm working on three more topics. I'll be getting those hopefully to award today. So we can extend this out and kind of turn this Thursday morning into a, uh, you know, a, a normal thing we all get together and do. Um, again, the store is open from 10 to 4 Monday through Saturday with someone answering the phone. Ward is putting together a plan on how we can start opening up to, you know, get back into the mainstream. I don't think anything's going to happen until at least the end of this month. But uh, we're, we're trying to get a plan together so that we can get back to some sense of normalcy. Again, anything that you need, go ahead and order it over the phone or online, and you can arrange for uh, pickup. You know, they'll do curbside pickup, or if it's over 50 bucks, they'll ship it to you for free. So, again, we appreciate your business and, and uh, keep that going. Uh, the chat box is live, so if you guys need something, throw it in the chat box for me. Otherwise, um, I'm going to leave this unmuted as long as it doesn't get unruly, and I'm going to now share my screen so we can get into Lightroom. And a comment, you know, I do listen to what everybody says, believe it or not. You know, my, my wife sometimes says that I'm not the best listener, but I think I do a pretty good job here. Um, and that is, is that someone commented that my, my pointer wasn't large enough. Is this a better size pointer, folks? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and that we have to thank Rick Genthy for. So we're going to talk about collections and let me move that window on my other screen. We're going to talk about collections and uh, collection sets and virtual copies. So first off, a collection is basically a set of images that we make a proxy of, and we can make those Im that collection out of all images in the same folder, or we can make images out of multiple folders. And the benefit of using a collection is that what it allows you to do is go from library to develop, to map, to book, to slideshow, all the different modules that Lightroom offers you. And you're able then to see those images. So for example, I have Dan and Lindsay open right now and I've got six images here. If I go to the develop module, mm. the only thing I see at the bottom are those same six images to work with. But darn it, I really wanted an image out of my around Lodi group with the fire department so when I click on that particular folder and I go to the develop module, well, I've got the fire department now, but I don't have Dan and Lindsay. So it really makes it uh, difficult to go back and edit. A good example would be is if you went to Florida every year for the last 10 years and you had a folder for each year's trip and you decide you wanted to put together a montage of over those years, because let's say, for example, one of your kids was graduating from high school and you wanted the pictures of them on the beach over the last 10 years to show how they've grown up and um, you know how the different things you've done down there. If you wanted to do that, you would have to keep going back and forth between each folder to get those images and export those images and do whatever editing you wanted to do. By making a collection, it makes it a lot easier. So for example, I have here, some collections I've done, and they're in a collection set, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And these collections happen to be the bottom left I'm working here. These collections happen to be for the different uh, aspects of Lightroom that I might want to teach. So if I want to talk about how to crop and straighten something, I have taken images from multiple fo folders and put them into a crop and straighten collection. If I want to talk about how to use the radio filter, I've taken several images and put them into a collection of their own so that I can work with that collection. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and close this collection set up. What we're going to do first is it's kind of got a slight delay from the time I click it to where it goes. There we go. Um, what we're going to first do is create a new collection. To create a collection, we're in this collection little window down here. If you don't see these windows, if you right click on any of these toolbars, you can see you can turn things on and off. So if I want to turn off my published services, which I never use, I can turn it off. If I want to turn it back on, I can just go ahead and click 
and I'll turn it back on and make it available for me to work with. It's a, it's a real handy way to uh, minimize your sidebar so that you're only focusing on what you want to work on at that particular time. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new collection. And to make a collection, see this little plus here? We click on plus and it gives me three options, create a collection, create a smart collection, or create a collection set. We're gonna start with just a basic collection. So if you click on that, it's gonna open up a window here and allow you to name it. And I'm gonna name this one Portrait. And I don't want it inside of a collection set. I just want it to be a standalone collection. And I haven't chose any pictures to put in there right now. You can also include pictures that you might have selected. We're just going to create the folder for that collection right now. And we hit Create. And now you can see down here in the bottom left, I now have a folder that says Portrait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to Dan and Lindsay. And I'm going to take our young lady here. And I'm going to just drag her into that collection that says portraits. So yeah, now I have a number one on there. I'm going to come down a little farther. I'm going to go to Guy and Becky. And there's an image here that I was thinking of that I liked. I'm going to grab this picture of Becky going face to face with her goat. And now I have two in that collection set. I'm going to come down a little farther and do Kim and Eric. And we're just going to grab, uh, we'll, we'll grab this one. And we'll throw it in there. So now I've got three. Now as I come down a little farther, I want to go to Rick and the girls. And I'm going to take this particular picture of him showing me how large the trout was he caught. And we're going to slide that one down and put that into that portrait collection. And lastly, I'm going to let's see where else did I have them in here? I had another one in here I wanted to do but I'm not seeing it, so we're just gonna skip that right now. And now what you can see is if I click on portrait, I have picked up those images from those folders and created a proxy image, which allows them to sit in that collection set. So now those four images actually represent an image from four different folders above, but as I go from module to module, I just went into the develop module, they're all there for me to work with. Does this make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Anybody yep. using collections right now in this fashion? Nope. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Now we're going to say, let's say we want to create a collection set. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the little plus arrow here again, and I'm going to say create a collection set. And that collection set, I'm going to call, I'm going to call it portraits. And a collection set is denoted by a looking like a shoebox on the end where the portraits, the collection are just like a stack of images. I have an empty collection set right now. If I take the portrait collection that I created and just drag it up and drop it on portraits, it now has gone into that collection set. So a collection set is real easy to use in terms of um, Let's say, for example, and I'm going to, as I go through this, I'm going to show you with virtual copies how I will make additional copies of the same images and crop them differently for if you want to do four by six prints, five by sevens, eight by tens, 11 by 14s, and so on. We're going to make it a lot easier uh, to organize those, as well as if you're a portrait photographer and or you're just delivering to your client images that they may be printing, you're going to control the cropping and how that image looks so that they're not taking it using the wrong image and then cropping off half the image and ruining the integrity of the image that you personally designed, set up, and put a lot of hard work into for these people. So we've talked about how we can create a collection. We can create quick collections. This is another really nice tool that, that they have built in here. I'm gonna go back to the library mode. And if you- Hey Dave, it's Jeff here. Yeah. Um, when you when you move a picture into the collection mm -hmm. from the library, mm -hmm. is it just moving a copy of it, and does it leave the original in the library folder still? Uh, absolutely, the the original is in the library. All it is doing is and it's not even making a copy; it's making a proxy of it. 
So, okay. uh, you know, so that what and, and that's a real good point. And I was going to get to that in a minute. But, you know, I don't mind jumping ahead. And Randall just sent something. If one collection is dragged to a side collection, does it appear in both collections or a side collection? It will appear in both collections. Um, so you can you can have the same image, for example. And, and I know that I've done this down here. So let's go down to my tools example collections. Um, I know that I put in heel and clone in that collection, this nice young lady here from Lodi that, or this gal goes around all these fairs and stuff. And, and this is her Susie the duck look. If I go into portrait, nope, that's not where it's at. I put her somewhere else. I know I did. I might've put her into radio filter. There she is in radio filter. So you notice that I've got her in multiple collections. Mm, okay. One of the ways you can see that she's in multiple collections is that at the bottom here, there's this, you can see this little plus and minus means that it was edited in some way. And then this little icon here shows us it was in collections. And if I click on it, it shows what collections she's in. So oh, she's neat. basic, my heel, my radio, my adjustment brush. Okay. Now let's show you with her, since we have this up and live, let's go to the library. <clears throat> I'm in the radial right now. I'm going to pick her up. And in this one, I'm just going to be really mean to her and darken the exposure. Now, if I go to the basic one, I think I saw her in basic two. Now in the basic one, notice that that same adjustment got made in the basic one. So now if I take it and I, I you know, blind it out, and I go to the radio filter, now she's blinded out. So what happens is if you make an adjustment on, if, if you have the same image in multiple collections and you make an adjustment on one, it makes that adjustment everywhere that image was at. That's why we're going to talk about virtual copies in a minute. Oh, thank you. And if I go and adjust this back to how it was shot, it's going to adjust it back in all the different places because right now we're looking at her in the radio filter. If we go back and look at her in the basic module or basic tools, uh, she's she's the same way. It's adjusted. So if you make an adjustment one place and you go to another one and it's still made, then what you're going to find is going to that that adjustment was made there also, and um, it'll drive you crazy. So that's why we're going to talk about virtual copies here in a minute. Let's show you two more ways of making collections because these are both very, very helpful. Um, and they, they, they just, they come in so handy. So I'm gonna go back to the library mode. And in the library mode, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna just pick up, I'm gonna make it so I can see all my files. What I can do Okay, Dave, you do this all the time. Here we go. We, we can do is we can add this to the to a quick collection by coming down here and clicking on right click on the image and slide down to quick collection or you can use the keystroke letter b so if i have this particular image active and i press the letter b come over here press the letter b we're going to get a picture of jenny here letter b we'll get a magnolia b and for the sake of goofing around with something uh let's get old rocky with his award letter b so now if i look at this quick collection up here the items that i select as a quick collection are going to all stay together now here's the thing i can reset that quick collection anytime i want and you'll notice that down in the in my collection menu those collections don't exist so if I wanted to, what I could do is I could then make a new collection. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these images. I'm going to say make a new collection. And to select all the images, I did Command A or Control A. And now I could do Quick Collection, include my selected images, and then hit Create. And now what I've done is I've taken those images and made a collection. What I can then do is come back up here to my quick collection and hit clear the quick collection. And now they've gone away from the quick collection, but they're still available because I made them into a permanent collection by creating a collection for those. 
quick collections are great. If you're doing like a portrait session and you've got, you know, 150, 200 images, and you're trying to sort down to five or 10, you can add those to the quick collection real fast and then save those off and now make yourself a, uh, it, it makes that collection for you to work with and you don't have to look at all the other images. Is this going to be helpful for people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is this making sense? Definitely. Yep. yep. Yes. Yep. Uh, Bob, I'll come back to that question you just texted me or uh, chatted. Thank you. Okay. Now, here's another way that you can make a collection, and that is is that you can use um, you can make smart collections, and smart collections are. I'm going to just first of all get rid of those and let's go back to everything. Okay, a smart collection is a collection that uses some sort of a flagging or naming methodology that you did. So what I did is I now I'm going to create a smart collection. I'm going to call this one flagged images. And I'm going to come in here and say, I want to use my pick flag and my pick flag is flagged. Or I can say my pick flag is not flagged. Or I can come in here and I can add another rule to it and say, okay, let's say, for example, I want um, all label that are colored red. And once I set that up and I say create, what it's going to do, I call it flagged images like a big dummy and put the labeled red ones in there. So all the images that were labeled red, apparently I only had one image labeled red and it is now in my collection. Let's do that again. I'm going to delete this collection. I'm going to come back and create a new smart collection. Go back here to the source. I'm looking at everything. I'm going to create a new smart collection. And now I'm going to do flag again. I'm going to change this to pick flag is flagged. and hit create. And now I've got 143 images in my new collection because all those images I had flagged and no matter where they were flagged within the, in the catalog, it picked up all those flagged images. Oh. It's a fun tool to use, but it can also be a be problematic because it doesn't work on a, on a folder level it only works on the overall level. So if I wanted to create a smart collection and I only wanted it to do it in a particular folder, all right, add another one here. You see, there's no choice for, oh, you know what? I'm a big dummy. They added this somewhere along the line. You can use it by a folder level. So you can go on the folder level and say only, only if the folder, well, I'm not going to go through it, but you see, you see what I'm saying. You can go and you can drive down your criteria by saying which folder you want to work in because we're not going to have enough time to play with that much more. But now you've got three ways in order to make collections. You can just create a collection and drag your images into it. You can create a quick collection and then make that a permanent collection or you can then use the smart collections in order to make collections. And you really wanna use collections because again, I have images in multiple file folders that I wanna work on together. And instead of playing ping pong and going back to the library into develop, back to the library into develop, back to the library into develop, mm -hmm. I can just work in, in one, one collection. So now we've got some collections going. Let's talk about what we can do in terms of using um, virtual copies. So what I will do a lot of times is I will come in here and I've got these four items. And if I select them all and I say I want to make a virtual copy of them all, I can come down to create virtual copies. It's about halfway down. So you right click on the image that opens up your dialog box and you go down to create virtual copies. So what I do a lot of times is I will create a set of virtual copies. Um, 
And now what it does is it puts a copy right next to my original. Now, if I go back to my library, let's go back to that was, um, go back to portrait here. You can see it made it that it put that virtual copy right next to the original copy I had in my original folder. So every time I make a virtual copy, it's going to put that original back or that virtual copy back next to its original in the folder where it is normally stored. Again, the virtual copy and the um, collection are just proxies of the original image. So what I may do here now is say, okay, I want to crop this one. Let's go in the develop module so we can make it work. I may want to crop this image as an eight by 10. So I'll come in here and I will crop this as an eight by 10 for my client. And then this one I may want to crop as a five by seven. And maybe I want the five by seven to be this way for the client. These are not, you know, absolutes, but the idea is, is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to make enough virtual copy so I can make another virtual copy of this one by right clicking on it, say create a virtual copy. And now I can come in here and make this one. Uh, let's crop this one for a uh, square. <coughs> So you can see that now what I've got is I've got three different crops of the same image that I can now export and put in folders and give to my client so that they have images that they can go ahead and print. And it's not going to ruin the integrity of how I, I vision that image to go. The other nice thing about a virtual copy is, is I can come into this one and I'm going to just go ahead and reset that one completely to back to how it was shot. And maybe on this particular one, I want to do something different with it in terms of, I want to vignette this one a little bit, maybe. I want to come back in and I just want to check my, my white balance. So let's find a nice gray area. Yeah, that's not too bad. But I want to brighten my exposure a bit and let's maybe give it a little more warmth. And let's try to pull some highlights back. And I'm going to maybe, oh, come on soften a little bit by taking a little bit of presence out of it. And I think it's looking a little too saturated. So I'm gonna pull the saturation back just a little bit. So now I can do is I can look at this one and go, yeah, you know what, that's okay. And you know, maybe I like this one better. I don't know what I wanna to do to them some of the times, but using virtual copies allows you to edit that same image repeatedly. And in doing so, um, not mess up the one you had done before. So that you can try different things and let's say you've got one that you really like or you think you like, it, you, you're not going to destroy it. You can just continue on and make as many virtual copies as you want. And all those virtual copies, now if I right click on this and say, well, let's get it back up here on the screen. If I right click on this and say, show me in, go to folder in the library, it's going to now take me back to Guy and Becky's Farm, the folder in the library. And you can see I've got three here. Now, and you can see it says one of three, two of three, and three of three. So this is my original that I did, and then these two are copies, virtual copies originally. You can tell they're virtual copies because they've got this little turned up page in the bottom left. At the bottom, you can also tell what I've done to each one of these. These are part of a collection. I've cropped it, and I've done some editing to it. What about stacking those? If I then take all three of them and highlight them, right click and say stack, group into a stack, what it will do is, okay, it said group into stack. There we go. Um, what they did is they got grouped into a stack and now it's showing that there are three copies. See the little stack of pages here and you can see the, the one of Becky and her goat. If I now click on that stack, it expands the stack out 
if I click on the stack again, it puts them together. So you can have a bunch of virtual copies, but it's not going to take up a lot of space on your screen. What you're able to do is open and close those stacks. You can also, in the stacking, split the stack if you need to, remove from the stack, or you can unstack them. If I don't want them stacked, I want them just to be all as separate images in my uh, sorting grid. I can just click on unstack, and now they are unstacked, but they are still uh, virtual copies. Is the benefit of the virtual or of the stacking just simply to save space, or are there any other benefits? It saves space. I don't stack a lot because, uh, you know, a lot of times what will happen is I'll forget, you know, I mean, I edit so many images, I'll come back and forget of what I did, but if I see them side by side, it'll remind me. Um, again, it's a personal preference. There is no right or wrong way of doing it. It's just, it's a, it's a cool tool that's there. Can you create a smart collection by date? I 99% sure you can. So why don't we do this? Let's come back up here. We'll go to the top. And we're going to come down here and click on collections, create a smart collection. And we're going to do this. Instead of that, we're going to go to date. And we want the capture date or the edit date. We'll do the capture date. And the date is uh, 2020. Oh, so yeah, 2020. I don't know what dates I have in here. So we'll do 2020. Uh, actually, let's do this. 2019-05-05. Let's see if there's anything there. Hey, there's nothing in that collection. But if I was going to do it by date, let me show you how I do it. Let's do it a little. Let's take a different <clears throat> path to that. You know, there's two ways to get to the same result. What I would do is I would go to metadata, and in metadata, I would come up here and say 2019. May, I said May 5th, May 20th was the only date I had in there. Okay. Uh, let's say we want to take uh, July 12th was a Friday night. What I would do is I would select those and then maybe what I would do is say, I just want all of those that are at 15 millimeters. So now I've got a, a group of images. I would say command A to select them all. I would come down here and quit right clicking where you don't need to right click. Come down here and say create a collection and include the selected images. And what was that, May what, May 12th or July 12th? Twenty nineteen and hit create. And now what I've got is I've got a collection down there with those images in that collection. So you can do it through a smart collection or you can do it by using the metadata to isolate the images you want and then highlighting them all. And when you make the collection, tell them to put those images in that collection. Someone's asked if the camera company is processing uh, film and or can you only order items? Uh, we are processing film. I think they're down to processing like one day a week but um, you can give the store a call. Uh, someone asked if I'm using an external hard drive for my primary storage, but the drive is getting full and you want to move to a larger drive. How do you use that do that? Um, it's really actually kind of simple. You notice over here on the left-hand side that I've got my Macintosh hard drive. This is working on my uh, drive that is, is in the computer because of the fact I've only got a few images on here for teaching, but I have eight terabytes of hard drive hanging off the back of this computer that my normal catalogs sit on. Um, it's okay to split your catalogs between multiple drives. So what you could do is let's say you fill up one drive, just start filling up another drive, but make sure both of those drives are plugged in so that Lightroom can see those images. Or when you get the new drive, what you want to do is move your images by grabbing that folder and dragging it to the new drive. And it will take all your images over there and keep all of your, uh, all of your collections and everything. Yeah, I know I can't do that. Um, it'll keep all of your collections and all of your settings and everything you've done, all that metadata will stay intact as you move it to the, to the other drive. Has this been helpful today, folks? Yes. Mm -hmm. did, I, did I answer the questions of what a collection is? What's a collection set? Why do we want to use them? And virtual copies, how fun they are? Sure. Mm -hmm. yes.
Now keep in mind, let's say you put that virtual copy in three or four different, um, three or four different uh, collections, it's also going to uh, make those changes in each one of those other collections. So anytime you edit one, it edits all of that particular virtual copy or that original image or whatever. The way Lightroom is set up, it will edit it wherever it's at, that same image. So that's the, the one thing to be careful with. But when you create a virtual copy in a given collection, it only exists in that collection, correct? It doesn't create a virtual copy everywhere the original proxy is? Okay, so when you create a virtual copy, I'm, I'm in a collection, okay? I'm in my portraits collection here. And I'm gonna make a virtual copy of Rick here. If I right click on this and say create the virtual copy, it's only made that virtual copy in this collection but it also made a virtual copy back here in the, in the library in the original folder where that original image is stored. Okay, thank you. So it, it will put that copy back to where that original was at. I'm new to your, your website. Um, do you have on your website other Lightroom presentations that you've done that we can go and watch? Absolutely, here, as a matter of fact, let me do this. Let me get out of here real quick. Uh, stop sharing the screen. And let me get a browser up. Yes, I really wanna quit my Lightroom. Okay, let's go in and pull up just a browser right now. And I'm going to now share my screen. Also about uh, deleting a virtual copy while you're looking at that. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and ask the question. You might want to comment on deleting virtual copies. Yeah, if you delete a virtual copy, it deletes, well, it, it, it depends on where you delete it from. And um, when you right click to, to delete it, it'll ask, do you want to remove it from the collection set? So it'll remove it from the collection set, but leave that same virtual copy back in the original folder where uh, next to the original image. If in that folder you say, you know, delete, it's going to say, do you want to delete this virtual copy? And if you say yes, that virtual copy goes away, but your original is not impacted. Does it eliminate it then from all of your uh, collections? No, uh, if you eliminate it back at the original source, it should eliminate it from all the collections. Absolutely. Uh, you should see my, you should see my um, uh, screen now. So let's go to the camera company and let's pull up the, our website. Okay, if you go to our website and you go all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see that there's a social media tab and on that social media tab is a little YouTube icon. If you pop that YouTube icon open, it's going to bring up all the videos that we have. So if you go to all the videos, and I'm going to sort them by date right now, the newest is at the top. You can see that last week we talked about basic editing. Uh, we talked about importing a week before that. Um, somewhere along there, there should be one on exporting. Uh, not seeing it, but I know it's there. Yeah. Right and then there. as you, and as you scroll back down through here, over the years I've put you know uh, different videos up here on on how to uh, using the radio filter in Lightroom, adjustment brush in Lightroom, uh, creating collections. Um, I've updated that quite a bit from then just by today, so this one can probably go away. Uh, straighten and crop tools. So there's a number of different uh, Lightroom um, tutorials there. And those are all normally just, you know, anywhere from eight to 10 minutes long. I wish I kept all the, the outtakes from some of the stuff we did because um, on this part, there was a day where I was doing a circular polarizer outside and I'm not paying attention. I unscrewed the polarizer and it fell right off the front of my lens. Um, we have all sorts of other ones there too. But there's quite a few different uh, videos here to use. 
and every once in a while just to, to see what's happened, I'll go to most popular and sort them that way. And uh, I can't believe that Mike uh, Gelman, Manfrotto Mike, as I called him, we have 66,000 views on, on, on that one. I did a quick start for uh, export to print has gotten 43,000 views over four years. So these, these are here to, to help you out. And, um, you know, my email address is uh, danderson at cameracompany.com. Yeah. I normally answer as quickly as I can. Normally within 24 hours, I'll get back to you. Um, when I'm in the store, you can always give me a call. So again, I want to thank you. And uh, remember, if you need anything, don't hesitate to give us a call. Give us a holler. And uh, with that, you folks have a great day and look forward to uh, seeing what we're going to have up in the next couple of weeks for um, some tutorials. Thanks, Thanks Dave. a lot, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Great. Great. Thank you very Bye, much. Dave. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. You guys have a great day. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now.